What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to talk about the best ETF that you can invest in today. As always, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything that I'm stating in this video is just my opinion. Make your own decisions. On my channel about a month and a half ago, I made a video explaining uh, why I sold all my stocks. Yes, I was trying to time the market because I assumed another dip would come. It didn't come and I made a video a couple weeks ago explaining basically why is the market continuously going up. And we've entered this weird new era where valuation doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what earning reports are or unemployment numbers are. All the news is pretty much bad. Uh, let's just do a quick recap of everything that's happened in the last couple days. Brooks Brothers has filed for bankruptcy. Uh, JCPenney, as part of their bankruptcy, is closing more stores and liquidating. Bed Bath & Beyond is going to close 200 stores. Uh, Pier 1 Imports has told all their suppliers to stop making products for their stores. This goes along with bad news uh, for stores like J. Crew, Lucky, Chuck E. Cheese, Hertz, Gold's, Gold's Gym, GNC, Neiman Marcus, uh, and the largest uh, Pizza Hut franchise chain. Uh, let's see, bank earning reports are coming next week. It won't be good. Uh, reality begins to sink in as airline for airline investors as United warns they're going to lay off 36,000 people. Uh, disaster, uh, U.S. earnings loom, but investors try and look forward or look beyond. In my last video, I kind of explained what's happening, and that's, that's not what's happening. There is a glut of money in the market right now. Because of the federal government uh, stimulus spending and then the Federal Reserve uh, quantitative easing and lowering interest rates, for people who have money, they have more money than ever before, and they don't know what to do with it. Uh, with interest rates being so low, everybody is borrowing, and there isn't any good deals out there. When you look at uh, home, real estate and home prices, they're at all-time highs. This is complicated, but the reason why is because nobody is moving, nobody is selling. That puts buying pressure on the market. Prices are going up. Additionally, uh, you know, 32% of Americans missed their housing payment in July. A third of American households are not paying their mortgage currently. And uh, because of laws passed basically giving uh, mortgage forbearance, um, people are not being foreclosed on currently. Yes, I think a large percentage of these people will be able to make their payments in the future and save their mortgage, but a lot of them won't. And the housing market is not going to cool off, come down, possibly crash, uh, until people start getting foreclosed on. And that might not happen for another six months to a year. Additionally, I don't want to say the word because YouTube doesn't like that word, but this is the daily new cases, uh, the seven day moving average. Uh, you know, we were trying really hard in April to flatten the curve. We did sort of a good job. And then at the end of May, we decided we were going to open everything back up and we're basically back on back on the roller coaster where we were. Now, if you listen to media, they'll say, oh, yes, daily new cases are rising, but they're younger people. The mortality rate is lower. The death count is still low. That's what matters. And that thinking is very nearsighted. One, young people who are transmitting it can easily transmit it to older demographics. But two, anybody who contracts the virus, it's going to take two to five weeks for them to expire from it. So when you look at, let's, let's get rid of this. When you look at uh, when, when cases were peaking on April 4th, and then you scroll down to the death counts, uh, cases, death cases peaked on April 21st. So April 4th to April 21st, it's about two and a half weeks. So if cases once again are peaking today, July 8th, uh, then in two, two and a half weeks, we're gonna see the death count uh, peak. I don't think we're gonna have another national shutdown. I think uh, shutdowns are gonna have to happen on a state and city, county, local area, but they are coming. And to a lot of investors, this doesn't matter. They have the cash, they have nowhere else to put it, they're gonna keep buying stocks. And it's, a, it's actually a very small number of stocks that's carrying the S&P 500. So when you look at this amazing rebound we had from that uh, March, March collapse, 
uh, it's, it's actually only been some stocks that have brought the S&P average back up. And the ETF, I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is now, that I'm gonna be heavily investing in is Vanguard's, uh, um, uh, Vanguard's Mega Cap Growth ETF. The reason why is because this ETF uh, includes all of these companies that are basically creating a bubble. I admit, they're a bubble, and I do not feel comfortable buying these individual stocks. But I do feel safer buying an ETF of those stocks. The stocks that are, uh, you know, inflating the S&P 500 uh, are companies like Tesla. Uh, you look at their growth the last six months. When you look at uh, Amazon, likewise, just tremendous growth. Other, st other stocks like Shopify, these are all up 30 to 50% in the last six months. And the valuations are not there. Uh, this, this is a bubble, 100%. But frankly, I don't see the reality of the investing landscape changing in the next six to uh, eight months until we have the vaccine. Once we have the vaccine and everything can go back to normal, perhaps the stock market will return to sanity. But for the meantime, investors are gonna keep dumping money into stocks like Tesla and Amazon and Shopify because they think people will continue buying it at a higher price. It's the same logic with buying gold. The only reason why you buy gold is because you think someone later down the road will buy it from you for a higher price. It's easy with these hot stocks that aren't profitable or you know the valuation is intangible to say, well, yeah, I'll buy it at this absurdly high price, but I know somebody in a week or a month or six months is gonna buy it at an even higher price the valuation doesn't seem to matter. I like Vanguard's ETFs just because I'm familiar with them and they're easy to navigate. I really like their website. It's pretty straightforward and basic. So if we log on and we look at their uh, listing of ETFs, they offer 74. They're default sorted by asset class. Um, what I really like doing is scrolling down to the bottom because at the bottom, they're gonna give you all of the uh, sector ETFs. Now, all of Vanguard's sector ETFs were created at the same time about, either January 2004 or uh, September 2004. So they all basically have the same uh, history that you can look at. It's only 16 years. Ideally, I would like there to be greater than 20. I think that will give a more representative um, average of their performance over time. But just looking at 16 years, uh, it, it's pretty interesting. And when you stratify them since inception, it's no shock that uh, their information technology ETF, VGT, has performed the best. Uh, since, incep since inception in 2004, it's averaged 11.93% a year. The 10-year average is 20.26%. The last year, 33.87, and year to date, uh, even with the March collapse, it's up 18.10%. Consumer discretionary comes in second uh, with the uh, since inception average at 10.09. Year to date, it's up 10.67. Healthcare comes in third, and then uh, we can skip the ones in the middle. The worst sectors in the S&P 500 easily is uh, energy and financials. So if you've been in this uh, energy ETF since 2004, uh, yes, it has a very high dividend yield. That's important to mention, 5.12 currently, but it's only averaged 2.23 you know, since 2004. And uh, for the one year, it is down 38%. Financials down 14.89%. We can click on the ETF VFH, the financials ETF, and you can see uh, what the 10 largest holdings, so this is 41% of the portfolio, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Berkshire Hathaway, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, BlackRock, uh, American Express, Goldman Sachs. I personally do not want to be investing heavily in these banks because they might have to uh, take on a lot of debt to get through whatever the next couple years are going to be like. I definitely think these uh, sector ETFs, when they're down, could potentially be a good short-term investment if you want to get in and get out, if you think like once the vaccine's announced, all of a sudden these stocks will rise. But holding these long-term, I, I just don't see in, in the next 10, 20, 30 years 
I, I don't see these ever outperforming consumer discretionary spend or technology stocks. Same thing with the sector ETF for Vanguard Energy, VDE. You look at their 10 largest holdings, 72% of the portfolio fund, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Phillips 66, uh, ConocoPhillips. The problem with energy stocks is one, I think there's gonna be a lot of disruption in, in the energy sector going forward uh, as new technologies and new energies, new innovations um, become, make costs cheaper uh, and, and, and different, uh, different companies uh, more, more viable in this sector. So if we look at the best two performing sectors, we can look at the ETFs for VGT and VCR. So VGT is the technology ETF. This, this holds Apple, Microsoft, Visa, MasterCard, Intel, Cisco, Adobe, PayPal, uh, Salesforce. These are all the hot stocks that are, have been doing pretty well the last decade and I think are gonna continue doing well. The problem with getting in a tech ETF for me is the lesson we learned from the dot-com crash. So QQQ is another uh, tech, tech ETF. Uh, the VGT only goes back to 2004, but we want to look at the dot-com crash from 2000. So when you look at this ETF, it peaked uh, in, in March of uh, 2000 at 110, and then the uh, the, uh, the, the, the price value of this ETF, this tech ETF, did not recover until, let's see, when was this? Uh, did not recover until 2015. So it took 15 years for this tech ETF to recover from the 2000 dot com bubble. So if you think, you know, looking over here, we're in another bubble with our tech stocks. Uh, that is a concern that I have exclusively investing in just a tech ETF, which is why I like VCR, the Vanguard Consumer Discretionary ETF. This includes a little bit more diversity of stocks, and this includes uh, companies like Amazon, Home Depot, McDonald's, Nike, Lowe's, Tesla, Starbucks, Target. So ideally, I wanted an ETF that was kind of a mixture of these uh, growing hot stocks from tech and consumer, uh, consumer discretionary. And I think the best one, this is, this is why I'm making this video today, if you scroll up, the best one is, uh, under, it's under large cap, and it is, the, uh, it is MGK, so Mega Growth Cap ETF. Not all of Vanguard's ETFs in this asset class are 10 years old, so the best we can do is sort by performance the last five years. Yes, I know that's not a lot of time, uh, but when you look at their five-year performance, it's averaged 15.91. Year to day, it is 27.53. When you look at their holdings, it's a mixture of all of the stocks that are doing crazy good right now. We've got Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook, Visa, Home Depot, MasterCard, NVIDIA, Adobe. And to know exactly what you're in, just click on Portfolio Holdings. And uh, there are 112 uh, stocks in here. And these, these are the hottest growth stocks. You'll, you'll notice that Tesla is in here as well as Amazon. So there's a lot of stocks in here that I just don't want to individually buy. In 10, 20, or 30 years, will these tech stocks still be the largest companies in America? I'm sure people in the year 2000 never would think that Walmart or ExxonMobil would no longer be you know, in the top 10 largest companies in America by 2020. That has happened. So I don't want to be nearsighted. However, I am looking for a solid investment for the next six months to a year. And I feel like uh, people, even though the valuations are not there, the metrics are not there, the news is horrible. Uh, people who have money are gonna continue buying Facebook and Apple and Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Tesla, because they're buying brands and they're buying off of reputations and they're buying off of Elon Musk and personalities because they think that at a later day, somebody will pay even more money for it. For that reason, I'm looking to invest about 40% of my portfolio into the ETF MGK. 
I'm going to still hold 40% in individual stocks. I just like um, watching them and then choosing myself. Uh, and then I'm going to try and hold between 10 and 20% cash in case uh, another dip comes. I can buy the dip. And uh, will I hold this, this ETF in my private brokerage account, you know, 10 years? No. I, I think eventually this will cool off and come down as the market returns to normal. Maybe interest rates are raised. But in the near future, I don't see the stock market crashing again. I don't see it going down. There just isn't good alternatives for people with money to put their money anywhere else aside from these uh, well-known brands uh, to, to preserve their capital. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about finance and investing. And if you have any questions or comments, leave me one down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until the next video, take care.